Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Hilary Booth and I'm a naturopathic doctor and welcome to my video blog. Today I'm going to be talking about protein powders. So protein is an important aspect in our diet that a lot of people don't get enough of. And on the other side of the spectrum, some people are getting too much. So first of all, protein powders are a really great way of supplementing your diet, especially if you are working out or you're working on um, building up your uh, muscle mass, but they're also really important for a lot of other functions in your body. To be more specific, actually they're important for every single function in your body. Um, protein makes these things called enzymes in your body. And enzymes are basically what does every single action and reaction in your body in order to help you function. So everything from your immune support, to your hormones, um, to your muscles, to your digestion, it's all because of protein. So we need to make sure that we're getting enough in our day. So first of all, what is protein? So what defines protein from carbs and fats is basically that it has a nitrogen atom in it. Um, if you remember back to high school chemistry, nitrogen is really important um, to distinguish these protein molecules from other, other kinds of molecules in the body. There are 20 different kinds of proteins. They're um, all called amino acids, and these are basically the building blocks that make up proteins. So there's 20 different kinds, but your body has the ability to make some of them on its own. So out of those 20, nine of them are what we call essential amino acids, meaning that you need to eat them in order to, to have them in your body, because your body can't produce it on its own. So nine of those amino acids you need to be getting from your food. But ideally, we are getting a full complement of all 20 in our um, food each day. Animal proteins like chicken or fish um, have a hundred percent of your amino acids, so all 20 of those amino acids are there. Plants have um, different varieties of the proteins, but not necessarily a hundred percent of the different types. So that's something to be aware of if you are a vegetarian or a vegan. So. Um, I want to talk about how much protein you need to be getting in your day because this is going to help you figure out whether or not you need to supplement with a protein powder um, or whether or not you're getting too much maybe. So you need a very specific number, 0.8 grams per kilogram of your body weight is how much protein you need per day. So I'll give you some examples. If you're 120 pounds, this means you are about 55 kilograms, and this means you need about 44 grams of protein per day. If you are 160 pounds, you're 73 kilograms, and if you are about that weight, you need 58 grams of protein per day. Final example, if you're 200 pounds, and that means you are 90 kilograms, and this means you need about 72 grams of protein per day. Now, this number is a rough estimate, but this gives you a pretty good idea. Now, if you are a bodybuilder or a marathon runner, you typically need between 0.9 and up to 1.2, sometimes even higher. Um, grams per kilogram of body weight, but please consult with your healthcare practitioner to figure out how much is appropriate for you to be taking in. So some signs that you're not getting enough protein. Fatigue, um, slow recovery from any injury, uh, frequent cold and flu, hair loss, um, blood sugar dysregulation, low mood, hormone imbalance, and feeling hungry between meals or feeling like your meals don't fill you up enough can be indications that you're not getting enough protein in your day. So um, if this is you, you may consider doing a protein supplement like a protein powder. So the first question that I always ask when I'm looking into protein powders is what kind of protein is it? Typically, um, protein powders are either whey or casein, or they can be hemp, rice, uh, pea, or soy. I think those are all the ones um, that, that I can think of right now um, that are commonly found in protein powders. Whey protein is probably your most common. Now both casein and whey are derived from dairy. So if you have a sensitivity to dairy, if you um, get gas and bloating a lot, this you probably have a sensitivity to dairy. Um, typically though, I see most adults do have a sensitivity to dairy. So I typically stay away from the casein and whey proteins with a couple exceptions. So the first one is that again, if you know you don't have a sensitivity to dairy and you are doing bodybuilding, and you're having quite a high intake of the protein. Um, whey protein is very easy, easily assimilated and digested into the body. So um, if that's you, then whey might be the way to go. <laughs> Didn't even mean to do that. Um, 
Now also whey protein is probably the cheapest. So if finances, finances are an issue for you, you can consider whey protein powder. Now something else to consider here though is that you don't, if you don't have a sensitivity to um, dairy, you may develop one over time if you're having this protein powder every single day. So you can switch it up every once in a while or you can choose another option which would be, um, my favorite is a blend of hemp, rice, and pea. And they can come together in um, lots of different proteins will have different variations on the theme, but the blend together is really nice. I find the texture is good, it digests well, and it's palatable. I find rice protein is good. It can be a little bit grainy, um, so if texture is a thing for you, maybe consider that. Um, hemp protein is good, but it can taste a little bit grassy and earthy, and um, it can be kind of a little bit of a greeny brown color, so if visual things pro are, are a problem for you, then you may want to avoid hemp proteins. Um, but typically you may need to play around and your health food stores might give you a sample of protein um, in just a little packet. They get samples from the companies all the time. So you could ask them and maybe try out some different proteins before you purchase a whole tub. Now, um, the next question you want to ask yourself is how much protein is in each scoop? So they can vary a lot. Most protein powders that I like have about 20 grams of protein per scoop. So um, but some of them go up to like 60 grams, some of them are down at about 10 grams. So you want to take a look because if it's only giving you 10 grams of protein per scoop, you're either going to have to double up on your scoop or make sure you're getting enough protein from your food sources in your day. Conversely, if it has you know 60 or some of them have 80 or something like that grams of protein in it, you may be getting way more than you need in your day. And that can have some harmful effects as well. So you want to, again, look for things within around the 20 range depending on your personal needs and your personal weight. Um, now, so uh, an example of a, a typical day, so if you do a 20 gram protein powder at breakfast and that goes into your smoothie and um, then you do a six ounce chicken breast, say on your salad at lunch or in your wrap or wherever you're having it, um, and then you have a six ounce salmon filet with your dinner, that's going to give you about the amount of protein that you need um, for a 160 pound person. That's about 60 grams of protein. So this gives you a general idea of where you might fall on this scale. So there are lots of calculators online. Take a look and you can figure out what's right for you. Now the third tip that I have for proteins, uh, protein powders, is to look at what other stuff is in there. If there is sugar in your protein powder, I typically say stay away from it. Um, this can cause blood sugar dysregulation, um, it can cause food cravings, it can cause um, hormone imbalances and hormone changes. So again, stay away, even if it's artificial sweeteners, um, such as like stevia or Splenda or that kind of thing, those can still, studies are showing that those still have a major impact on the way that your body perceives, tastes, and craves sweets and um, has feelings of being full. So please avoid those. The way that you make your protein powder taste good is by using real food. <laughs> so please uh, get creative. There's lots of recipes available, but blend in um, berries. You can blend in carrots and mango for a different flavor. You can do um, ginger and kale for another different flavor. There are tons of different varieties that you can try to make on your own with real food. The other thing to watch out for is a lot of protein powders nowadays are adding other stuff in. Some of them are great if you're doing a supervised liver detox, for example. Um, they can be great to take short term. These are not things you should be taking long term or if you're not medically supervised. You should also avoid these things if you are on any medication whatsoever and if you are pregnant. Uh, please speak to a healthcare provider before uh, choosing a protein powder if it does have other things added in. The other thing to watch out for is that oftentimes protein powders are adding in like tons of other stuff. For example, they'll ha say they have like a full multivitamin in their protein powder. Please be cautious. This can be kind of a bit of a scam. Um, not that they're meaning badly to the consumer, but um, I don't want you to think that you're getting a full multivitamin in your protein powder because most of the time what they're adding in there are forms of vitamins that are not very well assimilated into the body, meaning you eat it and it just goes right through, um, or they're not in very high doses. So it's practically negligible or useless and they're just adding a little bit in there so it looks good on the label, but um, please make sure that you're talking with your naturopathic doctor or nutritionist or someone else who knows about dosing um, to make sure that you are getting enough 
B vitamins, for example, if that's what you're looking for. And oftentimes, you're going to need to be getting those from alternate sources, not from your protein powder. So, um, the takeaway messages from my video blog today are, first of all, figure out how much protein you need to be getting in a day for your weight and for your level of activity, and then work backwards from there based on what you typically eat in a day to see how much protein you need to be getting from your smoothie. Second, only use whey protein if you're 100% sure you are not sensitive to dairy. Most people are sensitive, so I steer clear of it unless you're a bodybuilder or unless um, you have finances are an issue for you. Three, I like hemp, rice, and pea blends in some way, shape, or form, but there are lots of other kinds out there. Find one that works for you. Five, or four, <laughs> avoid artificial sweeteners, avoid sugars, avoid additives to your protein powder if possible. Um, again, these things aren't always what they seem and can cause more harm than good in the body. So as always, I hope you learned something today, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me from my website at hillarybooth.com or on my Facebook page. You can also uh, book an appointment with me by calling our office or by contacting me directly, and I'd be happy to help you book an appointment. Thanks so much, everybody, and I hope you have a great week.